After a reaction is complete, the solution often contains more than just the desired product. The mixture may contain undesired byproducts of the reaction, unreacted starting materials, catalysts, or inorganic salts. These compounds have to be removed in the process of isolating the pure product. A common method used for this initial isolation is a liquid-liquid extraction, where an organic solvent and water are used to separate most organic molecules from water-soluble compounds. The organic compound would partition into the organic phase, whereas the aqueous constituent would partition into the aqueous phase. Separating the phases is therefore a separation of solutes. This technique is known as extraction. There are a few things we need to know about the organic solvent before we can start the extraction. 1. The solvent must readily dissolve the substance to be extracted. In addition, the substance must not be readily soluble in water. 2. The solvent must not react with the components of the mixture. Three. The solvent must be immiscible with water. 4. The solvent should have a low boiling point so it can be easily removed. Upon mixing the organic solvent with water, two distinct layers should form. To distinguish between layers, take note of the unique densities for each solvent. Dilute aqueous solutions have a density of about 1 gram per milliliter, similar to water. The solvent with higher density will be on the bottom, whereas the solvent with the lower density will be on top. For example, ethyl acetate has a density of 0.87 grams per milliliter, while water has a density of 1 gram per milliliter. When these two solvents are mixed, the organic layer composed of ethyl acetate will remain at the top. Dichloromethane, however, has a density of 1.33 grams per milliliter, which means that when it is mixed with water, the organic layer composed of dichloromethane remains at the bottom, while the aqueous layer remains at the top. Be sure to look up the density of the organic solvent that you intend to use so that you can easily identify each layer. You can also verify the identity of each layer by adding one of the solvents to the test tube or the separatory funnel, and observe which layer increases in volume. Now that we've got the basics down, let's see how this technique actually works. Extraction involves selectively dissolving compounds within two immiscible solvents. Extraction can be performed via two methods. One, microscale technique, with either test tubes or conical vials covered in the first half of the video. Two, separatory funnel method, covered in the second half of the video. Microscale technique. Suppose we've created a product that is soluble in diethyl ether, but it contains water-soluble contaminants. First, we would add about 5 milliliters of distilled water or other aqueous solution, and add about 3 milliliters of diethyl ether to the reaction flask, stir, and then allow the solution to sit for about 1 minute. In doing so, we have begun separating the aqueous contaminants into the water and the product into the diethyl ether. Use a pipette to transfer the solution into the first clean test tube labeled TT1. Now we can get another clean pipette and transfer the top organic layer containing the product dissolved in diethyl ether into a second test tube TT2. Make sure not to draw any solution into the bulb of the pipette. This completes the first extraction of the original solution but there may be more product trapped in the aqueous layer, so another extraction or two must be performed to ensure that all of the product has been isolated. In order to perform a second extraction, add about 3 milliliters of diethyl ether into test tube 1, which contains the water layer. Mix the biphasic solution by gently bringing the solution in and out of the pipette two to three times. Allow the layers to separate, and transfer the top organic layer containing the dissolved product into test tube 2, which already contains some product in ether solution. This extraction step can be repeated to ensure that all of the product is isolated from the aqueous solution. Do not throw out any layer unless you are sure that you don't need it. Many organic solvents contain residual water. To remove the bulk of the water from the organic layer, 
It is rinsed with a saturated sodium chloride and water solution called brine. To perform this wash, add about 5 milliliters of brine solution into the test tube test tube 2 containing the product solution. After mixing, the excess water in the organic layer migrates over to the aqueous layer to establish equilibrium. Transfer the organic layer containing the product into a clean and dry test tube, test tube 3. To remove any remaining water from the organic solution, an anhydrous drying agent is added, such as magnesium sulfate. Add a spatula tip of the drying agent and swirl. The magnesium sulfate will quickly absorb the unwanted water in the solution, creating clumps in the flask. Once at least some magnesium sulfate is free-flowing, no more needs to be added. The appearance of the swirling solution should resemble that of a snow globe. The drying agent is now filtered using a filter pipette, which can be made by pushing a small piece of cotton down into a pipette using a wooden dowel. The collected solution is transferred into a pre-weighed Erlenmeyer flask. Finally, the solvent is removed from the desired organic compounds using a gentle stream of air or gentle heating for 15 to 20 minutes. Once the solvent is removed, the mass of the crude product can be recorded. For larger scale reactions, extractions are performed using a separatory funnel. 1. Filling the separatory funnel. Using a retort stand, support the separatory funnel on an iron ring. Place an Erlenmeyer flask under the tip just in case the funnel leaks. After closing the stopcock, use a filter funnel to transfer your reaction solution containing an organic extraction solvent to the separatory funnel and add an equal volume of water or other aqueous solution as instructed. In this example, our desired product is dissolved in ethyl acetate. The separatory funnel should be no more than 3 quarters full. You should notice the two layers starting to form after the solution has had some time to settle. 2. Mixing and venting. Mixing ensures that the solutes are adequately distributed throughout the solvents. The immiscible solutions must be mixed thoroughly in order to increase contact between the dissolved compounds and the two solvents. To mix the solution, first insert the stopper at the top of the flask. Hold the stopper tightly either with your index and middle fingers, or grasp the funnel so that the stopper is in the palm of one hand and the stopcock is held with the other. Shake the funnel gently while the funnel is inverted. Shaking too vigorously might cause an emulsion, which is a cloudy, particle-filled mixture of the two solvents. If this occurs, you can add some saturated sodium chloride solution to break it up. While shaking the funnel, pressure can build up if volatile solvents like diethyl ether are used. As such, be sure to vent the funnel every few shakes by opening the stopcock while the flask is inverted to release any pressure. Be sure to vent the flask while pointing it to the back of a fume hood, away from yourself and other people. This shake and vent method should be repeated two or three times. Repeat until you cannot hear gas escaping when the stopcock is opened. When finished, close the stopcock and return the funnel to the ring stand so the layers can separate. 3. Separating the solvent layers. To begin separating the layers, place a labeled flask underneath the funnel tip. Remove the stopper to allow the liquid to drain well. Slowly drain the bottom layer until you reach the liquid-liquid interface and close the stopcock. If you are done with the top layer, pick up the funnel and pour the top layer into a second labeled beaker through the top of the funnel to prevent recontamination. Return the aqueous phase back into the separatory funnel and pour in a second volume of organic solvent. Repeat the shake and vent technique and separate the two layers again. Performing this extraction two to three times is usually enough to fully extract your desired organic material from the aqueous layer. Do not throw out any layer unless you are sure you don't need it. Now that we have extracted our product, we need to remove any solvents from the mixture. Many organic solvents contain residual water. To remove the bulk of the water from the organic layer, it is rinsed with a saturated sodium chloride and water solution called brine. To perform this wash, 
Add an equal volume of brine solution into the separatory funnel containing the product solution. After performing the mix and vent technique, the excess water in the organic layer migrates over to the aqueous layer to establish equilibrium. Once this is done, transfer the organic layer into a clean and dry flask. To remove any remaining water from the organic solution, an anhydrous drying agent is added, such as magnesium sulfate or sodium sulfate. In this example, magnesium sulfate will be used. Add a spatula tip of the drying agent and swirl. The magnesium sulfate will quickly absorb the unwanted water in the solution, creating clumps in the flask. Once at least some magnesium sulfate is free-flowing, no more needs to be added. The appearance of the swirling solution should resemble that of a snow globe. The drying agent is now filtered using a filtration apparatus and either a Buckner or Hirsch funnel. The collected solution is transferred to a pre-weighed round bottom flask. Finally, the solvent is removed from the desired organic compounds using a rotary evaporator. Once the solvent is removed, the mass of the crude product can be recorded.